What's up, Latio Techers? Today, we're talking about SCA scanning and container vulnerability scanning. Now, this particular area has given me a little bit of confusion in recent years because in the old, old days of one to two years ago, um, container vulnerability scanning was really more different than it is today from SCA scanning. And that's because container vulnerability scanning really primarily using Trivi is the open source tool from Aquasec that a lot of tools are using under the hood. Primarily, it was focused on finding OS-type vulnerabilities, things like an Ubuntu package that was installed, finding the vulnerable versions of it and how to fix those. But over time, more and more language-specific support has been added to the scanners, and that's caused a lot of overlap with SCA scanning. And SCA scanning is software composition analysis, and that's usually things like looking at a package JSON file and we'll get into more about what that means. Whereas container scans look at the actual built container image. So let's just look at a couple of examples to talk about that difference. And here, first of all, I have a insecure app that both has a JavaScript and a Python version, just so that we get an idea of what this looks like in different languages. In Python here, I'm defining in my requirements.txt file the request version I'm on, the cryptography version I'm on. And you'll notice in the actual application, I'm not even importing these files, right? This is purely just so that I can scan something. I'm making it look like I'm using it, but I'm not actually importing it anywhere. And in my Docker file, I copy in the requirements.txt file, and then I install those dependencies. So those dependencies are installed on the disk, but they're never actually called. And this is an important distinction when we talk about different scanning techniques and tools is some SCA scanners particularly will look at this and they have a very code-centered approach to how they're thinking. So they're looking at this at the code level and then they're able to tie it back to the application, maybe see that I never import it. If I do import it, they're able to see, am I using these in a way that they're vulnerable? And that's called function level reachability, where they're actually trying to figure out, am I using a function from say cryptography that is vulnerable to an attack within my application? And then, container scans will look at the built container image and they have the benefit of seeing is this actually getting installed right so I might have cryptography here but say I wasn't even installing it on this image it was just there then it wouldn't show up in those but really what spurred this video is there's a new generation of these container scanning tools great examples of them are Codem and Oligo primarily because they use eBPF technologies to not just see are these installed but are they running now, there's a third option I'm not going to get too much into called Deep Fence, and it's because they instrument in a different way, not using an eBPF agent, but rather actually loading into your image itself in a special way that we're just not going to get into. But those are really the three options for uh, this emerging category of tools that really do both SCA scanning and container scanning, but take a much more runtimey approach to them. In JavaScript, you'll see it's very much the same thing. Here's all these vulnerabilities that exist and what their versions are. SCA scanner, same thing, we'll look at this. They'll check my source code to see, am I actually calling this from anywhere? Am I using these? And then same thing on the Docker image side, you'll see I'm copying in the package JSON file and I am installing them. So that's the pattern. And same thing applies here. The container vulnerability scanning will show these, but it'll have a much more runtime flavor. So let's look and what that looks like using Sneak, for example, to do an SCA test. So there, I could have used SEMGREP, I could use Endor. There's a lot of tools in this space, but Sneak's what I already had set up. And you'll see here that Sneak looks exactly at what we were talking about, where it sees the cryptography vulnerabilities, it sees the request vulnerabilities, and URL lib, you might think to yourself, whoa, how'd that get there? There's no URL lib here. Ah, well, that's because URL lib, you'll notice, is a transitive dependency where it's coming in via request. So this is another advantage. Usually SCA tools are the ones that show this where the they'll know that URL lib is coming in from requests and if it's getting executed as a result. So let's just take this CVE, for example. I didn't pre-do this, but this is CV 2019-11-236. And let's check out if that applies when we build this image and tag it in secure app testing one. I forgot to say in the Docker files right here. So there it built it and it built fast because I've already built this image before. But now we can use Trivi to scan this image in secure app testing one. And Trivi will scan it. Whoa, that's way more than Sneak found. And that's what we talked about is that 
Trivi here is seeing vulnerabilities within the Linux packages, right? But let's see. Oh, what's this? It found URL lib and it found requests. But notice it did not see that URL lib is coming in via request. So you're starting to see some of the differences between these tools. But at the end of the day, Trivi found every vulnerability that SCA scanning did. So that's what's important to emphasize here and what I wasn't really sure of is the container vulnerability scanning can find, in theory, everything that an SCA scanner can have. But a lot of it comes down to this package support, where if the scanner doesn't know how to analyze the package files, then it's not going to be able to deduce what comes from it. So language support is really important. Now, I know what you're thinking, but James, I want to see the JavaScript example. Lucky for you. We'll take a look at that too. That's because I'm in my app. And now if I run the test, so once again, sneak run some stuff. And once again, we have a transitive dependency here, right? Where React script is pulling in eventually nth check. So let's open that up, grab the CVE from this here, and then run a build. It's loading it up, loading it up. And then privy on it. Let's see if it found it. And it did. So once again, nth check. Once again, not showing the transitive nature of it, but it does find it within here. So really what we've shown is that there is, in theory, 100% coverage between these tools. But I also want to highlight some of the differences between them. Because really, just think about from a dev workflow perspective here, I could only trivi scan once the Docker image was built. And depending on how my pipeline works, I might not be building the Docker image until I'm actually deploying it. And at that point, it's too late to let a developer know, hey, that new package you just ran is actually pretty vulnerable. Conversely, you saw that earlier when I was text testing this, for example, I actually had my requirements set up wrong where it was not overwriting what was in there with what was already installed from just basically installing. And really, your SCA scanner could ultimately tell you things that aren't even actually happening in your environment. Like it's purely theoretical because the Docker container is what's actually running in your environment. So that's the thing you actually need to scan at the end of the day to get that production coverage. So typically, companies have ended up having both of these tools. They've had both SCA scanning to theoretically tell you what is there for the better language support to let developers know uh, what to fix as soon as possible. And they've had container scanning and they've had that in order to have the actual runtime context of what's there, what's running, what's not running and really just for that full visibility angle. But what, again, what's really exciting about this new sort of breed of tools that's coming up that makes them so valuable is they're able to use the runtime context, which is what you really need to have from a security perspective. Like at the end of the day, that's the visibility that you can't give up. That's why typically the CNAP providers have this functionality over the other ones. Some of them have both, but in general, they always have container scanning because that's the non-negotiable. That's what you have to have from a compliance perspective. But then this newer tool doesn't draw such a stark comparison. It gets the benefit of that runtime data, but it also gets the benefit of the build time scanning. And then it links those two things together so that you can see both theoretically what's coming in and what's running. And in that way, you can actually get the greatest possible reduction in false positives because both what should be getting imported, if it's transitive or direct dependency, or if it's a runtime. And let me give you an example here. I have a, a screenshot from the Codem platform because they don't just have a get started button, which I always love to see. Let me pull up this within Codem. You can see here this runtime insights button, but you're also seeing it alongside the direct versus transitive dependency filter. And it's this picture of the runtime insights alongside the direct and transitive dependencies. And then they're also linking the GitHub repo to the container image. It's all of this data together that really allows you to get the full visibility into what you need for seeing, am I vulnerable? Do I need to fix some of these things? Or what are the odds that it's a real vulnerability? Similarly, I will open up Ox's platform here, which looks like this. And they similarly, they, they don't do the runtime insights piece, but just having this visual is really the amount of data you need to understand what's happening, where here's what's in the repo. It's getting deployed via these pipelines. This image is getting created and deployed to these Kubernetes clusters in these AWS services. It's that full combination of scanning that creates the complete picture that really is the next generation of what these types of tools have to offer. So I hope you learned something today. I hope that was valuable. Thanks.